All right, in this example, we're going to try to take the derivative of this function, f of x equals 1 over x plus 2, but we're going to try to do it using the limit definition of a derivative, not the shortcut rules. If you haven't gotten to those videos yet, there's a, a list of multiple shortcuts you can take for certain types of functions to more quickly get to the derivative, but we're going to try not to use those this time. We're going to use the, the limit definition of, of a derivative to see if we can find f prime of x. Now, first of all, what is f prime of x? What is what is the derivative? Well, it's a new function uh, designated by this prime notation. It's a new function that will tell you the slope of this function at any given x value. So if you were to plug in an x value into f prime, uh, let's pick a number like 5, it would tell you the slope of 1 over x plus 2 at 5. All right, so first of all, just a, a quick reminder of what the limit definition of a derivative was. Um, it was the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. I'm not going to go through in, a, uh, in this video and explain where this came from. I have that in an earlier video in my Calc 1 playlist. Uh, roughly it has something to do with rise over run, but um, if you want to uh, hear more about those details, just flip back and watch uh, about two or three videos prior to this one here. So here we go. Um, I need two quantities here. I need f of x plus h and I need f of x all divided by h. So here's f of x. It's 1 over x plus 2. I also need f of x plus h. So let me go and find that right now. This will be 1 over not x plus 2 but x plus h plus 2. A common mistake that a lot of students will make is whenever they're trying to, trying to find f of x plus h they write f of x and then just add an h on the end. That's not what you do. What you do instead is you take whatever your x is out and replace it with an x plus h. That's the correct way to do it. So in other functions, you might have multiple x's. You would replace all of those x's with x plus h in parentheses in one little packet. All right, so let's put it all together here. Um, we have f prime would be the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over x plus h plus 2 minus f of x, which is 1 over x plus 2, all divided by h. So if we can evaluate this, limit will be done. Now, there is an obvious problem, though. Uh, this h is trying to go to 0. Now, if we were to evaluate this limit analytically, as we typically do, we would try to just let h be 0. But you see, that's going to be a problem as it is with all these derivative problems because that would give you division by 0. Notice this is always an h in the denominator for all these derivative type problems. So you're going to have this reoccurring problem show up time and time again. Thankfully, there's a, a way to get around this. Usually, there's some sort of algebra you can do on this fraction here that'll help us get rid of the h. Now, if you've never seen an example that has these compound fractions, that's, a, that's when you have a fraction within a larger fraction. Here's how you handle these types of problems, so you'll, you'll know this going forward. Uh, first, up, you have, first off, you have to get rid of the compound fraction. And the way that we do that is we look at these tiny denominators, right, and we try to find the least common denominator between the two that here that we're looking at. So being that these are do not have any common factors, it would simply be a product x plus 2 times x plus h plus 2. Now that in and of itself would change the expression, but if we put it over itself, then it's really like multiplying by the number 1. And, you know, in other words, these could cancel and you'd be right back where you started. So this is uh, legal algebra, what we're doing here. So let's see what that turns out to be. We'd have the limit as h goes to 0, All right, big fraction. I'm going to leave the denominator factored h, x plus 2, and then x plus h plus 2. All right, uh, now we're going to take this guy and distribute it to the first expression and the second expression. So take a look at what happens when we do that. We distribute these two to the first term in this binomial. The x plus h plus 2's will cancel, and you'll just get x plus 2, right? Because this is in the denominator, 
this is a, a common expression in the numerator they cancel all right and then minus minus all right uh, when you distribute to the second term in the binomial the x plus twos cancel this time so we'd have minus the quantity x plus h plus two make sure to leave that in parentheses because otherwise if you drop them you would need to distribute this minus sign through so it's looking okay it still doesn't look that great the only benefit I would say right this second is that there's no compound fractions notice there's no more fractions within a larger fraction that's what multiplying by the least common denominator will do for us so here we go limit as h goes to zero of um, big fraction sorry for the break in the page there h parentheses x plus two and then x plus h plus two keep that factored out in the denominator don't foil it across and then in the numerator let's just try to do this mentally if we can we have x plus two minus x minus h minus two so we have a little bit of cancellation here x and minus x two and minus two so we basically get negative h negative h over all this stuff all right, well, a couple of good things happen. First of all, the H's cancel now because they're a common factor. So when these cancel, you basically just have a negative, a negative one left in the numerator. Second of all, notice having this H go away removes the only problem I had uh, earlier of evaluating this analytically. Earlier, I could not plug in zero for H because I had division by zero, if you'll recall. Well, now I can, because the, this factor is gone now. So my, my final answer will look something like this. We'd get negative one over x plus two times x plus zero plus two. That's another factor of x plus two. So we have x plus two quantity squared. And that's equal to f prime, right? That we finish that limiting process. Now, if you find it a little strange that this uh, limit doesn't give you a numerical answer, that's totally, that's, this is totally fine having a variable in here and this not being a constant. Um, because you have to remember what, what this is telling us. What, what is the derivative? What's well, the slope at a given x value? So, you know, this curve here, this guy has an asymptote right here at negative two if you're familiar with how to graph rational functions and for anything larger than negative two it looks like this and before negative two it looks like this so as you pick different x values we would expect the slope to constantly be changing so that's that's no surprise there one other thing that makes perfectly good sense to me is uh, the fact that this function here was not defined at negative two right because you would get division by zero and that's why there's an asymptote here it does not surprise me that the derivative is also not defined at negative two all right because the the original function wasn't even defined there so it looks like we've got a, a pretty good idea that um that this actually is correct so um, hopefully that helps you understand taking derivatives a little bit better using the limit definition of a derivative uh, now what i would encourage you to do is learn the shortcut rules learn the quotient rule learn the power rule and the chain rule and learn other ways to take this derivative in a quicker way and then come back and watch this video again and you'll see how the long way the limit definition way turns out to give you the exact same derivative as the shortcuts do